Melissa, let me start with you um, and talk to me about Georgia's speedy trial law here. It's obviously now being front and center with what we've seen. What does it mean that both Sidney Powell and Kenneth Cheeseborough want to move up their trial? And is there any benefit to them in doing that? Right. I think for these particular defendants, they have a lot at stake. They're both practicing attorneys, so you have to imagine that their livelihood is in limbo based on these charges. So they do have a reason to want to get them resolved as soon as possible. Um, it also means that their case will be severed from the remaining co-defendants um, who, although these two have requested a speedy trial, the judge can't force all 19 to go to trial in two months. So those cases would be severed out. Um, that also means that those cases which are severed out, severed out get kind of a sneak peek, right, at the evidence that's going to be presented in this case. Because although most of the evidence will be um, confined to the actions of these individuals, it is a RICO case, so the state still has to make out the enterprise and the conspiracy. So some of that evidence will still be, will still come in in their trial, assuming... And, and they may be tried together, since they both filed speedies. They both have to be tried before um, the beginning of November. Um, so I would assume that they will both be tried together, if possible. Uh, Joyce, Mark Meadows says that uh, his case should be moved to federal court because he was working as a federal official for Trump. Uh, in Georgia or on behalf of Trump in the White House in Georgia. But Fani Willis argues that his conduct was uh, political in nature. And she points out that the Hatch Act prohibits federal officials from engaging in election activity. Uh, today, Mark Meadows' attorney fired back in a filing calling Willis's Hatch Act arguments a red herring. What do you think? So this is a very nuanced legal argument. It's important to understand that the law here is very defendant friendly. This removal statute is often used to protect federal law enforcement officers who are charged with crimes in state court based on their conduct, say, when executing a search warrant <clears throat> or making an arrest. So the law intends to protect federal officers. It's not a very good fit here, though, and federal judge Steve Jones will have the opportunity to look behind the curtain a little bit to make a determination as to whether Meadows' conduct was truly part of his job as the president's chief of staff. Where Willis has the better of the argument is when she makes the point that the president doesn't play any role in individual vote counts in the states, and Meadows was far into that uh, activity offering in one instance whether or not it might be helpful to Cobb County, whether it might not be able to speed up its vote if it had federal campaign dollars from the Trump campaign involved in that effort. So that may well be this sort of Hatch Act argument Willis is trying to make, that folks in Trump's orbit were going too far into the political arena to deserve the protection of the removal statute. Uh, Barbara, all three of the uh, indicted fake electors are trying to claim they should have their cases moved to federal court because they say uh, they were acting at the direction of the president when they met. Do those arguments have any merits to them? And could we possibly, just to elaborate a little bit more on Joyce's point, could we possibly see uh, somebody like Mark Meadows' case being moved to federal court but not uh, Donald Trump's or these fake electors? Yes, yeah, so the statute that allows removal to federal court requires that a person either be a, a federal officer or someone acting under their direction. And so to the extent these fake electors say that they were acting under the direction of the president, they fit that part of the statute. But that's not the only thing the statute provides. It also says that the person has to be acting within the scope of their authority. And as Joy said, the scope of the authority is governing, executing the laws of the United States. And when they are acting as campaigners, as politicians, then they are not acting within the scope of the authority. They weren't advancing any interests of the United States. They were only advancing interests of Donald Trump as a candidate. And so I think for the same reasons that Mark Meadows is going to have an uphill climb, I think these fake electors are going to have the same uphill climb. Now, it could be that if some of them prevail, that we see a split, that some of the defendants are tried in federal court and others are tried in state court. But for ease of efficiency, it may be that if a bulk of them go to federal court, then they'll all go. But I still think that's an uphill battle, especially in light of the fact that the defendant, Mark Meadows here, has the burden of persuading the judge that this case belongs in federal court. 
Hey, Joyce, putting uh, issues of removal to federal court aside for a moment, Trump has uh, uh, indicated that he wants to uh, sever his case from the other 18 co-defendants. Um, and perhaps we'll see that just as a result of uh, what Melissa was saying about the speedy trial motions from people like Kenneth uh, Cheesebro and uh, Sidney Powell. Do you see him succeeding with them being able to sever his trial from the others? So this will be part of a package argument the court will have to take up. 19 defendants, a RICO charge. There are reasons of judicial economy for bringing as much of this case in one piece uh, as possible. Trump's strategy has always been a strategy of delay, and his motion to sever is part of that ongoing strategy of pushing back the moment of accountability as far as possible. So the judge will have to engage in a balance, ensuring that Trump really does have adequate time to prepare. Tonight, the district attorney advised defendants' lawyers that she would need devices that could hold two terabytes of data for their initial pull of discovery. And so that's a lot of information for defense lawyers to go through, and they are entitled to adequate time. But by the same moment, the government is entitled to try its case in a speedy fashion, and the judge will have to balance those two interests in deciding questions of severability and timing.